river deltas. River deltas with their rich and fertile land stretch from hilltop to ocean and provide the perfect place for both people and all kinds of wildlife and nature to thrive. Migratory routes of birds, fish, and sea mammals run through the deltas due in part to the extremely high productivity and fertility of these places. Many species rely on deltas as a gateway or feeding or breeding grounds for their survival. Through the ages, many deltas have been chosen by human communities as ideal places for settlement, providing ample food, fresh water, and safe, comfortable shelter. Nowadays, deltas around the world host dense human populations and are vitally important centers of economic activity, ranging from agriculture and fisheries to trade and shipping. Nearly 30% of the global human population live within 50 kilometers of an estuary. That is 30% of 7 billion people. Ongoing population growth and rampant urban development in river deltas are also now putting the precious natural capital and ecosystem services they deliver under grave threat. Essential natural assets such as fertile land, abundant fish, shore protection and sediment trapping are at risk. In other words, 30% of human population is at risk. Climate change only adds to that pressure, not just for nature and wildlife, but also for human settlements. Especially in deltas, climate change is felt heavily. These low-lying lands where rivers flow into the sea are directly affected by big climate change impacts, such as dramatic and more severe weather conditions, changing river flooding patterns, and, crucially, greater sea level rise. Deltas are also affected by new water flows from rivers flowing out to sea, again caused by changing weather conditions. Maximum peak flows can dramatically increase, causing massive floods. Periods with very low flows can occur more often and longer, too in turn causing a shortage of fresh water for agriculture. Where land is eroding, people find themselves homeless and countries' foods production declines. All this is frequently accompanied by great social and political upheaval and security risk. Recent flooding in the Sundarbans, for example, a vast delta area that extends over parts of northern India and Bangladesh, again displaced thousands of people. Yet, even in deltas that have not suffered serious floods, climate change causes serious problems, like saltwater intrusion, contaminating drinking water, and coastal wetland degradation. What to do? First of all, WWF, alongside many other groups, is continuing to push for an urgent, ambitious global agreement to mitigate climate change. As cutting carbon emissions is essential to reduce these threats. We are also urging world governments, businesses, and financial institutions to invest in renewable energies and natural capital. It is far more easy effective and economical to prevent every inch of sea level rise than to adapt to drastic climate change. This weekend, hundreds of thousands of concerned global citizens from across the world came together at people's climate marches in New York in cities across the world, including Amsterdam urging leaders to take bold action to tackle ch climate change. This was followed by yesterday's 
Climate Summit in New York, presided over by the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, which saw world leaders come together to find solutions to address this, the issue. Every part of society showed up and delivered all except world leaders who still have a lot of work to do. There was a disappointing lack of leadership and commitment yesterday, just at the time when we need them most. A much more effective strategy to fight runaway um, carbon pollution is essential and urgent. And yesterday didn't match Ban Ki-moon's statement that said, uh, there is no plan B because there is no planet B. But adaptation is also important. WWF is active in many deltas across the world and the experience of our climate change adaptation experts has led to the development of key best practices based on nature's technology which are so often discarded because they are too natural. I will mention the most important ones. The first, ecosystem-based adaptation. Mangroves and other natural vegetation can be used as defense structures to break waves and trap sediment so the coastal wetlands will grow with rising sea level. Is an essential part of the bigger ecosystem, including the spawning grounds for fish and the mineralization cycle. Here today, we are guests in the Netherlands, a country which is world famous for its bold delta works. But nowadays, one must admit these massive dams brought safety only at a high longer term cost. Water quality and fish stocks and other important nature services have been lost. And above all, the tragically, the natural capacity of the deltas to evolve with the sea has been lost. We must all learn from these lessons of the past now that we understand the consequences. Then, community-based adaptation is another core concept. Delta dwelling communities often know already instinctively and from knowledge passed on through generations how to adapt. Using this knowledge will be very helpful. In the Pantanal, for example, stretching across Brazil, Bolivia and Paraguay, seasonal floods are not a major problem as people have developed a seasonal living pattern in which they seek higher grounds for the, new, for the few months with floods. A third approach is river basin-based adaptation. Rivers are the lifeline for deltas because they deliver sediment and nutrients and play an important role in many fish life cycles. Guidelines to limit climate vulnerable stressors such as wise dam and sluice gate operation in pollution mitigation are an effective river basin based adaptation. And both for wildlife and human settlements, especially in the Delta. Another solution is to promote environmental flows so that there are no dams in the main stem of rivers. Delta cities and communities are often wealthy and influential. So their governments can and must influence upstream developments. In the same way, they can use the tool of spatial planning. With rising sea levels, deltas tend to move landwards to find a new balance between erosion and sedimentation. And a healthy delta needs enough space for these dynamic processes to take place. These must be taken into account with new settlements and developments. Mangroves, for example, can buffer the effects of storm surges resulting from more extreme storms. 
This means they provide protection to vulnerable coastal communities and infrastructures, as well as supporting important fisheries. In the long term, in the longer term though, mangroves will still be affected by sea level rise and risk being submerged and lost unless they can move inland, keeping pace with rising water, if the topography is suitable. In some countries, such as Vietnam and Australia, communities are setting aside areas behind existing mangroves so that they can space they have space to move inland and continue this important ecosystem function if and when sea level rise necessitates this shift. So much of the ideal techniques based on nature's dynamics which work, but there is an additional challenge, getting all stakeholders on board. Without them, there is no long lasting success. The idea of building and evolving in step with nature is not at all easy to adopt because it asks for a different way of thinking. Soft structures instead of hard ones. More adaptive and flexible management. It must also be said that the initial investment costs can often be higher even though in the long run the total costs are lower. A recent article in Nature stresses that ecosystem-based adaptation projects can, can be more cost-effective in the long run than continuing conventional approaches to defense. Recent flooding in the UK and Germany make it clear that these ideas are not put in place easily. Even in the Netherlands today, a front runner in innovative water management, it seems hard to choose fully for nature inclusive durable solutions. Instead of making the dikes higher, the Netherlands had developed a so called room for the river approach, which was very successful, inspiring water managers from across the world. This approach is highly ecosystem based and delivers far more than only safety. Minister, WWF proposes the new Delta plan released last week takes up again this successful approach. By continuing the already demonstrated successful practice of room for the river, the Netherlands will have one more reason to lead in Delta management worldwide. Building solutions that are hand in hand with nature may not look at first glance as solid and safe as concrete dams. Though we only need to cast our minds back to the devastating flooding in New Orleans to recall the limitations of man-made flood defenses. Rather, adaptive and flexible management is essential as is living with and adapting to natural patterns. Another factor and a big problem and barrier to progress is resistance to change from parties who have their businesses based on old solutions. Also, short-term solutions are politically more easy, easily accepted. Building a concrete dam seems cost efficient in the short term. Maintenance cost and long-term effects are beyond the political horizon. These elements all make nature-based solutions difficult to promote and massive effort is still needed to get them in place. Yet, at the same time, and especially in places where natural estuaries and coasts still are present, these nature-based solutions are often easy and relatively cheap to implement. To make ecosystem-based adaptation work, one must invest in place-based, in-depth knowledge of people's needs, as well as ecosystem functions and requirements. And the only way to do this effectively is to cooperate across borders. Of course, this requires the existence or creation of specific governance structures to coordinate efforts to make Delta sustainable and businesses too. 
must adapt and shift from one-size-fits-all solutions to knowledge-driven adaptive management models, cooperating with partners in other countries. Conferences like ours today are absolutely crucial. We need to provide such fora for practitioners to exchange knowledge and help each other, but much more is needed. WWF is calling urgently upon governments, decision makers and big international companies active in water management and consulting to actively support the sustainable adaptation of deltas to ensure these areas are resistant to the effects of climate change. These institutions have the weighty and privileged responsibility of choosing and promoting the right solutions. Durable approaches which will deliver opportunities for business, for people and for nature and biodiversity. Governments and businesses must take action now and put a holistic ecosystem-based approach in place to ensure deltas resist the potentially devastating impacts of climate change still to come. Inaction puts lives and nature at risk. And that is simply not an option. Thank you.